What if Deku had a stand part two? I read all your comments, even if I do not like reply, I still read all the comments for suggestions. Now, after Deku, after that, Deku ends up facing Bakugo in the heroes versus villains. Bakugo being so sure that he can beat a corpus person immediately rushes him and sends his biggest explosion at him. Deku knew this would happen, so he jumps out of the way and says Star Platinum um Star Platinum Star Finger as Star Platinum extends its finger of around two meters and just attacks Bakugo which ends up knocking him off balance as Star Platinum yells, Uda. You guys said it's Aura or Uda, 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 like something like that when it said multiple times. So one of you guys said it's Uda, 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 or Aura, Uda, 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 or something like that. That's what you guys said, so I'm just going to say that. So Star Platinum just keeps saying Uda, 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 like just keeps repeatedly saying that and punching Bakugo. As Bakugo, as Deku's just standing there, as Bakugo is seemingly getting punched by an invisible force. Like, everybody watching this is just freaked out by this. Deku is just standing there as Bakugo is getting punched. And with one final Ura, Ura, Bakugo is down and knocked out. Deku takes his tape and wraps it around him, signifying that Bakugo is out. If you're wondering what Deku Hero costume is, it's basically just Jotaro's costume in Star Platinum. Or in Diamond Crusades, I think it is. Or Stardust Crusades. So, Deku ends up going up as he told Uraka to go up and find the bomb. She ends up finding the bomb as Deku sees that Ida is moving the bomb out of the way. Deku thinks for a second before he breaks a pillar off the wall, which he used some of Star Platinum's strength, but he didn't really need it because, remember, he trained for, like, all of his life. He throws this at the bomb, which Ida catches it, which allows Uraka to move around Ida and catch and touch the bomb, signifying the win for Deku and Uraka's team. So after this, they go back, and Momo says that the MVP is Deku, which Deku doesn't really care, and he just goes over and just watches the rest of the matches. One match he does find interesting is how Todoroki just froze the whole, like, building, which he just walked in and touched the bomb, signifying an easy win. So Deku starts to think about how he could beat him, which would be pretty difficult since he has, but he could always just break the ice. So, after this, everybody goes back to the, everyone goes back to, um, the classroom, where Aizawa says, Okay, we're going to need a class president, which Deku eventually gets voted with Momo vice president. So Deku's just like, <sighs> and I believe Yar Yar Days means good grief, but he uses it some, like other times. I'm just going to say he says that. I'm not really sure about the usage of it. He usually uses it in fighting. But... Deku ends up walking back to lunch and sits alone, which a bunch of people go up and sit with him. He's like, why are you he why are you guys sitting here? Which they say, oh, we thought you were lonely. And he's like, really? For really now? So they finish lunch only for an alert to happen. Everybody starts rushing out of UA as Deku's just still eating. Like, people are bumping into him until he's had enough, sits up and yells at everybody that this is a hero school and they shouldn't be acting like idiots. Which basically makes everybody stop acting like a complete moron 
and makes everybody stand up and or makes everybody go back and sit down so everybody's like congratulating Deku on doing this and like saving everybody from themselves and Deku's just like oh, you guys you people are annoying so after that the next day I saw what says that they will be going to a place called the USJ Deku obviously obviously gets into his hero costume and they end up going there. Now, once inside, Uraka starts, like, screaming and, like, cheering about how they meet 13, which just annoys Zuku even more. After this, though, Zuku just, as Zuku sees a purple portal open up, he gets ready as he's like, Aizawa, there are villains here. We need to act quickly, as Aizawa yells at everybody to leave, which, like, everyone's confused, until Deku starts punching kids out, not with extreme force, but he's legit just punching kids out of the door, out of, like, out the door. Like, the first kid was probably Mineta, who he kicked, the next was probably Bakyo, and so on. As everybody ends up getting outside, not wanting to be punched by Deku's in like, stand, which they still don't know about, the villains arrive, only to see three people, Aizawa, Deku, and Thirteen, which obviously infuriates Shigaraki as he starts stomping on the floor and screaming, Where are All Might? Where are all the kids? Is Deku just laughs at this. And he's like, so I see you have temper issues, huh? Can't believe you're the one who organized this villain raid. It's kind of sad. As Deku and Aizawa in 13 jump down and start single, singling, like, eating villains. And every time a villain would come close to Deku, he's just standing there. So they think he's an easy kill. Like, especially with those gun people like they're firing at him only for their bullets to be caught and then dropped and as I saw was like why is he not even moving he's just walking around and people are getting punched around him which obviously just makes Aizawa really confused like why is like is his quirk some invisible barrier when everybody goes up to him or something tries to hurt him it gets blocked or something or it hurts them back like Aizawa has no clue What's going on? Neither does 13, but they are... Is this a girl or a boy? I have no clue. But they're trying to beat villains. As all the villains are kind of getting scared of Deku. Any punch, kick, bullet, or sword, knife thrown at Deku is all getting stopped and, like, thrown right back at them. Like, they have no clue what to do. So, Deku, of, of course, beat pretty much all the villains, and so does Aizawa 13, which amazingly gets Shigaraki to, you know, start scratching his neck violently. He's like, ah, Kirokiri, bring out the Nomu, as Kirokiri does, and Deku instantly is like, this thing must be strong. They saved it for last. As Aizawa rushes in, Deku's like, why are you rushing in? You have no clue what its quirk, quirk or quirks are. As uh, Aizawa tries to rush in, but gets punched down and across the stadium. So does 13, and Deku, or Zuku, is just like, damn it. Now I have to deal with this by myself, as Aizawa and 13 are just knocked out. Just complete on. So, Deku starts fighting, fighting the Nomu as, the, as they exchange blows with Deku's invisible force as uh, Star Platinum yells, Uda, 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 or something like that. So, Deku ends up using Uda, Uda Rush, which does a number on the Nomu as it 
as the constant punches overwhelm its shock nullification, or shock absorption. But it doesn't beat it. Deku knows this, and he's starting to get tired. Remember that stands need your breath to, to work. And since he's starting getting tired and he's like taking longer breaths, he, so is Star Platinum getting tired. So this is around the time that All Might breaks through, and Shigaraki's like, hey, we're just about to kill this kid, All Might. So I, so, so I hope you're ready to face your doom as All Might and Deku start 2v1ing on the Nomu, which eventually, with all of the punches giving out, in, which overwhelms the shock absorption. Now, the Nomu can regenerate, but the shock absorption is, like, on a barrier to that. There's something wrong with it. If the shock absorption absorbs too much shock, shock waves, it can just blow up and never regenerate. And that's exactly what's happening right now. Deku and All Might are doing so many powerful punches that the shock absorption wonder how many times I've said that, is getting overwhelmed as the Nomu eventually explodes. Which All Might, since he had Zuku helping him, never had to go plus Ultra, meaning his time limit never went down. So as soon as, as Shigaraki charges right at All Might, as Deku sees smoke coming off of All Might, and he's like, oh, that must not be good. As he gets in the way and says, Rush, rush. As Star Platinum just repeatedly hits Shigaraki, and Kiragiri had to step in and take Shigaraki back. Now, Deku seeing that smoke's coming off of All Might, and he just sees a um, big poof, like a massive smoke cloud, and he ends up seeing All Might in this tiny puny jack skeleton form basically like you could see his bones and he's like yo all might what happened to you and he's like so he pulls up his shirt and he's like oh yeah i got this injury five years ago fighting all for one like he was like huh hmm i'm probably gonna have to end up beating him hmm if all might never does that so thank you Deku ends up taking All Might back to UA without anybody seeing him. And the teachers arrived much later than All Might, so... So, like, the teachers never arrived yet. So, Deku ends up taking them to the teachers, which all the students were end up evacuating back to UA. So, they never saw All Might. So, Deku... So, Deku ends up going back to his house as he's thinking all for one. He was able to beat All Might, and that creature was designed to beat him. That means I'm going to have to train a hundred times harder to be able to beat him. So, Deku starts training, like, a lot, or a hundred times stronger, like I said, than his normal training. Now, don't, don't forget, Deku, Deku has been training. He's corkless. He's been training for his entire life, but he's doing, like, an amount of training that's unreal for a normal Corkless kid. So after about a three day break in school, Deku goes back to find out that they're having another two week break for the UA Sports Festival. He's sort of happy, so because he can pretty much he can keep training, so he has to deal with the threats in the future, basically. So, after the two months are up, Deku ends up coming back. I'd say a little, not, it's, he's much stronger, but not too much, basically. He's sort of, uh, he, he probably is stronger, maybe three times as strong as he was at the USJ, which I'd say he's around all my strength right now. So, in the Colosseum, everybody is asked to walk out, which 1A is, uh, you know, just like in the anime, everybody's cheering and they get, like, a special entrance, while 
all the other classes aren't so lucky. So, Midnight announces for the representative to come up. Deku goes up and says, if you're not going to give me a good fight, then don't try. Then don't even try. So, they start, or everybody starts lining up for the race after Midnight announces it. Deku lines up Star Platinum into his feet so he can run faster. As soon as President Mike yells go, Deku just zooms off running so he can get first. He, But he's not using his whole strength as he doesn't want to show the world and villains what his true strength is. As that will allow him to basically be easier to attack. So Deku ends up dodging the three zero pointers hopping across the pit and is ended up at the minefield which Deku is using star finger to basically see where the mines are and he ends up just walking across for that one as he's already so far ahead and he ends up getting first so that's where i'm gonna leave it off guys hope you guys did enjoy what if Deku had a stand part two and it's either what if Deku was garo part six tomorrow or what if Deku was Jiren part six oh yeah see you guys bye